Let's first look at a simple scenario. If a particle is subjected to a constant force F, and under this force, this particle has moved along the direction of the force for a displacement of S, then the work done by this force to this particle U simply equals to F multiplied by S. For a more general situation, the force could be a function of time, and the particle could be undergoing curvilinear motion with direction not necessarily along the direction of the force. For example, let's say after a short period of time dt, the particle has moved to this position. The change in the position of the particle is position vector dr, and the length of the path here is ds, and if the time period is sufficiently small, ds can be considered to be equal to the length of the position vector dr. And during this short period of time, the work done by this force to this particle equals to its projection along the direction of dr, which is f times cosine theta multiplied by the length of the path ds. And notice that this agrees to the definition of dot product of two vectors, in this case the dot product of the force vector and position vector dr. Therefore, when the particle has moved from location S1 to location S2, the total work done by this force to this particle during this process equals to the integration of f cosine theta ds from S1 to S2 or the integration of the dot product of f dr integrated from r1 to r2. As you can see, since the dot product of two vectors is always a scalar, work done by a force is always a scalar, and it is always associated with a process involving change in position. In the SI unit system, the unit of work is Newton times meter, 1 newton times 1 meter equals to 1 joule, and in the U.S. customary system, the unit for the work is foot-pound, which is written this way to be distinguished from the unit pound-foot, which is the unit for moment. For a particle undergoing curvilinear motion in this established rectangular coordinate system, Initially, it is at state 1 with a position of R1 with a vertical coordinate of Z1. After some time, it has moved to a new position R2 with a new vertical coordinate of Z2. During this process, the work done by the gravitational force or the weight force acting on this particle equals to the magnitude of the force, which is negative W. It is negative because, as you can see, upward is considered to be positive z-axis, multiplied by the change in its vertical location, which is z2 minus z1, or simply negative w delta z. If the particle is moving downward, then z2 is smaller than z1, delta z is negative, therefore the work done by weight is positive. This is also easy to understand because as the particle is moving downward, it is moving along the direction of the weight force. If the particle is moving upward, then z2 is bigger than z1, delta z is positive, the work done by weight is actually negative. Also, this is easy to understand because as the particle is moving upwards, it is against the direction of the weight force. Therefore, the weight force is doing negative work. When a particle is attached to a spring, if the spring is unstretched, then the particle is at a neutral position, s equals to zero. At this point, the force exerted by the spring to the particle is zero. Let's say at state one, the spring is compressed, and the position of the particle is S1, measured from the neutral position pointing to the left. And because the spring always wants to restore its original shape, therefore it will exert a force pushing the particle to the right. And the magnitude of this force is negative KS1, K is the spring constant, and negative sign indicates that 
the force acts in the opposite direction of the position of the particle. And then the particle has moved to a new position, S2, and the spring is now stretched. And because the spring still wants to restore its original shape, therefore it will exert a force on the particle, pulling it to the left. And the magnitude is negative Ks2. Negative sign again indicates that the force is in the opposite direction of the displacement. Therefore, during this process from position S1 to S2, what is the total work done by the spring force? We can evaluate that using this equation. And let's use the scalar form, which equals to the integration of negative Ks ds integrated from S1 to S2. And we can derive this equation that we can use to calculate the work done of a spring force. Now, when you are using this equation, be careful that S1 and S2 must be displacements measured from the neutral position of the spring. They cannot be measured from some other reference point. When an object is sliding on the surface, the frictional force exerted on the object is evaluated by mu k times the normal force n. Mu k is the coefficient for kinetic friction. And when we count for the work done to this object, we can still use the magnitude of the frictional force multiplied by the displacement of this object to count for the work done by frictional force. Although it is not the true work done by the frictional force, because if you recall, the frictional force is the resultant force of numerous horizontal forces acting on the numerous contacting surfaces, and the displacement of these forces are not necessarily S. However, it is still reasonable to use this term because it counts for the total effect of the true work done by the frictional force, mu k n s prime, as well as the heat loss during friction. Let's look at this example. A ball with a mass of 8 kg is connected to a spring with a spring constant of 300 newton per meter. Initially, this spring is compressed by 0.2 meter, and then after this 400 newton force is applied, the spring is now stretched to 0.6 meter, and we need to determine the total work done to this ball during this process. Now, when this problem asks for the total work done to this ball, it includes the work done by all the external forces during this process. And a quick free body diagram of this ball indicates that we have the applied force, 400 newton, its weight, as well as the spring force. Therefore, we need to count for all the work done by all these forces during this process. To determine the work done by the forces, the very first step is to specify the initial and final positions of this particle. And we know that position must be measured from a reference point. Now, to determine the work done by the weight force, and in this case, this applied force, the reference point really doesn't matter. In other words, no matter how you choose this re reference location, you will get the same result for the work done by the weight and this applied force. However, it's a different story with a spring force. If you want to use the equation that we derived earlier to calculate the work done by the spring force, then the reference location must be chosen as the neutral position of this spring. Therefore, the initial position of this particle is negative 0.2 meter because initially the spring is compressed by 0.2 meter, and the final position of this particle is positive 0.6 meter because at the final state, the spring has been stretched by 0.6 meter. Therefore, now we are ready to do the calculation. First, the total work done by the weight force which equals to negative w times the change in the position s2 minus s1. Here, it is negative w because again, as you can see, we chose upward to be positive position. Therefore, it is in the opposite direction of the direction of the weight force. Therefore, that equals to negative 62.8 joule. Again, because the particle has moved upward, the weight force is doing negative work. 
the work done by the spring force, we're going to use this equation. Here, S1 and S2 are both measured from the neutral position of the spring. So we can use this equation just by substituting all the known values. And we get negative 48 joule. Then the work done by this applied force equals to its magnitude times the change in this position. Because this force is pointing upward, therefore the change in position is in the same direction of this force. Therefore, we have positive work, 320 joule. So during this process, the total work down to the ball by all three external forces, we add them together, and we got 209 joule, which is positive work.